Hi, thank you for watching my video. Uh, I'm Ollie Venn, one of the sales engineers for WatchGuard Technologies UK and Ireland. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to deploy a WatchGuard Firebox Cloud into Azure. So I've already logged into the Azure portal. Uh, I'm just going to go to create a resource and in the marketplace search, I'm just going to type in WatchGuard. And from here, I can select the WatchGuard Firebox Cloud. Now I have two options, either pay as you go or bring your own license. Bring your own license has some advantages over pay as you go, such as the cloud services we offer, things like uh, DNS Watch, and also the uh, the cloud visibility. So that gives you the ability to view and monitor your logs uh, and view reports, etc., uh, for 30 days retention with the bring your own license. The pay as you go, however, is just based on your usage of the uh, the firewall. So in the long term, it would be cheaper to uh, to use the bring your own license model, but for short term, pay-as-you-go definitely has some advantages. Um, the other great thing about the pay-as-you-go is it's free for 30 days from any watch guard costs. You will still pay a zero, or if you're deploying in this into AWS, uh, AWS, the instance cost to them. So that's the actual uh, infrastructure that you're using, the CPU, memory, disk space, etc. But actually there's no watch guard costs for the first 30 days for your first firewall. So I'm just going to go ahead and create, click create and then give it a name. I'm just going to call this demo. Uh, I'm going to choose my subscription which I'm just going to leave as Visual Studio here and then I'm going to choose my resource group. Now we do have to create a new resource group or uh, install it into an empty resource group. This is a Microsoft limitation. So I'm just going to go ahead and create one called WatchGuard Demo. And the location I want this to be in is the UK South, but you can choose any of the Azure data centers. If one isn't in the list, you can just create a case with Azure and they will add it for you. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I could just choose the tiers. Now there is a free tier eligible uh, for this, which is good for testing, maybe if you want to see what the deployment is like, etc. Um, but in any production environment, definitely recommend the standard tier. And then it will allow you to choose your size. So how many CPUs, memory, etc. that you want. We don't need to worry too much about the disk space uh, and going to SSD, etc. is not going to make any difference in performance. It's all about the CPU and RAM. As this is just a demo, I'm just going to leave it on the default. Now the SSH public key is a Microsoft Azure requirement. So we have to put a public key in if we want to access the box via SSH. Um, we talk about how you can get that public key via uh, in the deployment guide. Uh, but in true Blue Peter sense, here's one I created earlier. Now I have to create a, uh, a storage account, um, which I'm just going to go ahead and call WatchGuard Demo. And it just validates it just to make it sure it's unique. I can click OK and then click OK and it will take me to the next step, which is the network. We can see here it's given me a name of VNet01. I'm just going to change that to WatchGuard Demo again. Um, it's given me an address space of 10.1.0.0 slash 16. I can change this to be whatever I like within the 10 range. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as it is. I'm going to click OK. Now the second option is the subnet. Now this is very similar to a WatchGuard firewall that you will, uh, like the physical appliances that you may already know. We have the external interface and the trusted interface. Now on the external, we're giving it an address of 10.1.0.0 slash 24. And in the trusted 10.1.1.0 slash 24. So we're breaking that 10.1.0016 out into individual 24 bit subnets. I'm going to click OK on that one. We need to choose a network security group. I'm going to leave this as none as the firewall is going to be doing the security. However, if you wanted to, you can select a security group. My public IP address, I need to give it a name. So very creative, choosing WatchGuard demo again. I can choose the different SKUs for basic or standard and the assignment, whether that's dynamic or static. I believe a static license or a static IP address costs a bit more than the dynamic, so I'm just going to leave this on dynamic. Um, and it allows you to choose a domain name. Now, this is basically how you would connect to the Firebox rather than using the IP address. Um, so if you do choose a dynamic, you don't have to keep coming in every time to see what the new dynamic address is. We can just connect to the Firebox using the uh, the host name. So in this case, I'm just going to choose WatchGuard Demo, and that'll be .ukSouth.cloudapp.azure.com. And providing it's unique, it's going to allow me to progress. I'm going to click OK on that. And Azure will now just run some final validation checks just to make sure everything's OK, that I have enough... Uh, capacity uh, in my instance sizes etc um, and then I'm just going to click OK
and then it's going to take me to the uh, the terms of use, etc. Uh, I don't particularly want to give Microsoft permission to use and share my contact information, so I'm going to leave that box unticked and then just hit create. I'm going to pause the video now, as this can take a couple of minutes to uh, to run. Uh, as we can see, it's deploying, and uh, once that's done, I will come back to you. Okay, so a couple of minutes later, and uh, my watch guard uh, firewall is now running. We can see it's this one here, uh, not uh, ignoring my uh, my existing two firewalls. Uh, so the the cloud fireboxes work a little bit different to the default username and password. Um, obviously, just because these are now accessible via the internet, we don't want anybody just randomly trying to get in and, uh, and beating us to it. So what we have to do is copy the new admin password. So on the left hand side what we do is we go to our storage accounts. We select the storage account that we've deployed. So if you remember that was called WatchGuard Demo. Then we go to containers. And what we need to do is this bit here where it says boot diagnostics, WatchGuard, etc. This long number. It's actually this long number here that is the password. So I'm just going to copy that. And what I can do is I've opened up a, a new tab already and gone to my firewall. If you remember, it's watchguarddemo.ukself.cloudapp.azure.com colon 8080, and it's taken me to the uh, the login screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, paste that in. So it's admin and the uh, that long password. I'm going to go log in, and it's now presenting me with the uh, the Firebox Cloud Setup Wizard, which I can click on next. And then I have the end user license agreement. If you want to go ahead and accept that. I'm going to go ahead and give it a secure password. Remember now, uh, with the Firebox Clouds, if you don't change it by default, anybody can access these remotely. So they are available from any external IP address. So we want to ensure we're using a good, strong password to uh, to protect these. Obviously, we can go in afterwards and, uh, and lock them down. And that's it. So I'm now going to log back in. And I now have the uh, the front panel to my firewall. Uh, it's worth checking to make sure it's got the latest update. Sometimes it takes uh, Azure and AWS to uh, a few days or, or even weeks to upgrade the uh, the OSs of the available instances. But all we have to do is just go to System, Upgrade OS, and it will then go off and check. This may just take a minute or so to uh, validate that there is an update available. So as we can see, it's uh, it's now showing me the available is the 12.5.2. Uh, but that's it. I mean, our firewall is now ready to go. There are some limitations um, that we don't have with the physical firewalls, such as the network configuration. That needs to be done inside Azure rather than inside the firewall, such as creating interfaces, IP addresses, etc. Uh, but other than that, it's very similar to the uh, typical firewall. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a message, and uh, I'll be more than happy to help out. Thank you.